Okay. So there's sort of two kind of obvious ways to deal with this. Okay. One is to split the matrix up by column. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, and so store each column with the corresponding resource. Okay, so for example, for the insurance data, we would have this column of the matrix. And anytime anybody wants to access the insurance data, there's another little file that goes with it. And we just consult that, or the operating system consults that to see if the person is allowed to do what they're trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so the re stands for write, R stands for read, and X stands for? Uh, execute. Oh. Okay, got that? So now I've got a bunch of separate columns that we can store, you know, don't have to have them all sort of active at the same time. All right. Okay, well, if we can store it, and we call this access control list, okay, ACL. Uh, okay, if we can store it by column, we can also store it by? User. 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 Column, row. Okay, <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. Row, uh, and we call this capabilities or ceilings. So, you know, for example, for Alice, we would store this list because this is what Alice is capable of doing. Now, if you think of groups, uh, groups would just be a way to sort of, you know, put multiple access control lists or even capabilities together. Okay. Uh, okay. So, which of these is used in practice more? Do you suppose access control lists or capabilities? Yeah, you Unix users. Okay, access control list is the thing, right? When you create a file, you have to specify the permissions on that file, and that's what's going on here. You're saying who's allowed to do what with this particular file, usually in the form of groups, right? But same sort of principle as what's uh, shown here. Okay, now um, if you compare access control list capabilities, is there any difference? I mean, it's the same data, right? You've taken the same matrix and just chopped it up in two different ways. There couldn't possibly be any difference, right? Well, okay, here's uh, you know, a very simple setup. We've got three users and three files. Uh, here's the view on the left for access control lists and on the right for capabilities. Same permissions, right? So is there any difference? Any practical difference here? Well, think about this. If you're over here in this case, right? Fred, he wants to know whether he can access a particular file. First of all, he's got to know what files are out there. How does he know what files are out there? I don't know. It's not part of this. He's got to have something else to look up which files are out there. And then he goes to that file, and he can see whether he's supposed to get access to that or not. How about in this case? If Fred wants to go to a particular file, you know, the files sort of the file structure is kind of already built into the system. So you don't need any separate entity or separate thing to take care of that. It's there. And in fact, you could even say, you know, Fred, he's not supposed to have access to uh, file two, so he doesn't even need to know about file two, right? So we can make that decision right at that point. Okay, you could sort of do the same thing with access control list too, but it would be a little bit, you know, more clumsy to take care of. So there's some sort of subtle, uh, subtle distinction here. Uh, okay, uh, let's look at um, a case here, a very simple case where we have two resources. Uh, suppose we have a compiler, okay, so we can use the compiler on this computer. And we have a file called bill, where the bill billing information is stored. Uh, this is probably like way before your time, but um, in the past, you know, you had to pay to use computers. <laughs> So depending on how much time you use the computer, you, you're, that would be your bill, right? So the bill is the <coughs> file is supposed to keep track of how much you're using the machine here, okay, to determine how much to bill you. So the compiler, you know, has a lot of privileges and it can write to the billing file because, you know, how long did you use the compiler and so on. Now Alice, the user, she can invoke the compiler and she can also give a file for the debug information when she compiles a program, okay? Sounds reasonable. But of course, she's not allowed to tamper with this file called bill. Otherwise, what would happen? She would set her bill to zero or negative. You'd have to pay her for using the computer. Right? That would be great. Okay. 
Okay, so the access control matrix could look something like this. Something like that, like this. Uh, so we've got the uh, resources here, we've got the compiler and this file bill. We've got the users, Alice, and we'll treat the compiler again as both well, you know, an object and a subject here. Uh, so the compiler is uh, able to read and write the file bill, but Alice can't touch it. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Okay, now suppose Alice comes along and she tries to compile a program and she puts the debug file name as Bill. What's going to happen? Well, the compiler has the ability to do whatever it wants to the file bill. So the question is, you know, is the compiler going to act with its own privilege here and overwrite the file bill, right, with the, with the debug information, or is it going to act with Alice's privilege and not do that? Okay, well, if it acts with its own privilege, it would make a mistake, right? Uh, and this is called the confused deputy because it's confused, it's doing the wrong thing, and it's acting on Alice's behalf, so it's like Alice's deputy. Um, so, okay, so the point here is what? The point here is, let's get down to the bottom line here. The point here is, with access control list, it's kind of difficult to avoid this problem. You know, it's not so bad if you only take it one level. You know, you call the compiler and then it checks to see, you know, it remembers it's Alice and it checks to see if it's allowed to do what Alice is allowed to do. But the compiler might call something, and that might call something, and call something else. So pretty soon, you know, how do you keep track that this is really on Alice's behalf? Okay, that you're operating here. If you have access control, if you have capabilities, it's actually really easy to take care of this problem. Okay, when Alice calls the compiler, she would take her access control list and give it to the compiler. Okay, and that's what Alice is allowed to do, and I could just pass that along as it goes down the chain. So it's not impossible or anything like that to prevent with access, but it's easier to prevent with capabilities. Easier means less chance of errors, and that's good. Okay, we like this. Okay. Um, okay, so access control list versus capabilities. Uh, when would you prefer access control list? When would they be better than capabilities? Okay, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> okay, they're better if users manage their own files. Why is that? I mean, what do you do with access control list? You create a file and you would set the permissions on the file. And this is exactly what you do in Unix, right? You control the files that you create. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so it's sort of data oriented in a sense. Now suppose, suppose you have uh, like back in our first example, right, we had insurance data, right? Now suddenly we decide, hey, that insurance data is actually really sensitive. We should change, we should really restrict the permissions on the insurance data so that people don't mess around with that. Okay, now if you're using access control list, what do you do? You go to the one access control list that deals with insurance data and you make the changes, right? On the other hand, if you're using capabilities, what do you have to do? You have to go to each user and go to that particular spot and make the change. Okay, could be done, but you know, it's more chance of an error to do that. Okay, turn it around. Where are capabilities better? Well, you can delegate, okay, easier, like in that confused deputy thing. If you have users that come and go, like at a university, okay, now if you delete a user, now if you're using access control list, what do you have to do? Get rid of all traces of that user. You have to go to every one of those stinking access control lists, delete them from there, squeeze it together. Okay, you could do it, but it takes a lot of work. Whereas if it's capabilities, just delete the user, delete their capabilities, they're gone. Okay, so it's simple. Um, it's kind of interesting if you look at like the um, academic literature. Uh, all, you'll find lots of papers where they really love this idea of capabilities, okay? Um, but the, the catch there is that capabilities are actually much more complex to implement, okay? So that's why you don't really see these in practice too much. It's almost everything you see is really uh, access controllers. Um, having said that, 
uh, a couple years ago, I had a guy come in and give a talk, a uh, guest lecture. He was a consultant uh, for my startup company, or for the startup company I worked for, and a really good security guy. And at the time, he was working for Yahoo, working as like a, one of their top network security guys at Yahoo. And you know, I said, okay, you know, you're a security guy. You can, you can talk about whatever you want. You know, I, don't, I don't care if it's some security topic. He came in and he spent almost the whole time talking about <coughs> capabilities. Which really surprised me. I would have never, like the last topic I would have ever expected to hear, you know, somebody talking about. And his final conclusion was, you know, they use it a lot. They use that concept a lot. Uh, they did, at least at that time. He called it the Zen of information security. He said it's something, you know, you don't really think that much about, you know, it doesn't seem all that impressive when you first see it, but if you sort of get it and you use it in the right way, it's really powerful. I have a feeling that capabilities are used at a very low level of hardware sometimes for controlling what, ch what chunks of memory you can get at. Uh, the Intel segment of notion of segment registers was precisely that. A, a segment register in full form is a capability for a particular chunk of data. Mm. So in some sense, at a very low level, the way security systems work depends in the end on capabilities, at least if you're running Intel hardware. Yeah, could be. I mean, that's probably a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> 